Okay, this time we're going to graph the surface z squared equals 4 plus x squared plus 4y squared. This is one we may not recognize right away, um, so we're going to just start by doing the traces. Uh, I'm going to do the trace in the yz plane, so I'll plug in x equals 0. Um, we'll have z squared equals 4 plus 4y squared. And then we want to kind of go back to our knowledge of two-dimensional graphs to so think about what shape this graph is. Uh, this is going to be the graph of a hyperbola. When I get the z squared and y squared terms on the same side of the equation, they'll have opposite signs. Um, so if I subtract 4y squared from both sides, and then I'll want to divide through by the constant term, um, we'll get the, our, our equation here in standard form. z squared over 4 minus, and then we'll have the 4y squared over 4 which simplifies to y squared over 1 equals 1. So there's the equation of the hyperbola in standard form. And when it's in that form, we can tell that it opens on the z-axis, and we have z-intercepts at plus and minus 2. So I'll go ahead and put those on there. And then if we want to think about how steep the asymptotes are, so we can tell how wide or narrow the hyperbola is, I can use the y term, look at the denominator on the y term, scale off plus and minus one of the y axis, and then I'm going to put a little point here where I've gone over one on the y axis and up two on the z axis, lined up with uh, those numbers that came from the square roots of these denominators. And then if I use the center and the point that I just drew and draw in a dashed line here, that's one of the asymptotes for the hyperbola, and I'm eventually going to erase that, but I'm going to use it to draw part of my hyperbola, and then maybe erase the uh, asymptote. Oops, erased one of my marks on the z-axis also. Uh, erased the asymptote there, so I'm just going to use the part that I already drew and use some symmetry to sketch in the rest here. And I'm going to stop drawing arrows on the ends of my hyperbolas here. Um, I'm going to erase that last little piece and try to redraw that. Um, with the arrows on the ends, sometimes that can become a little distracting when I put in the other shapes as well. So. Uh, I'm not going to go back and erase those, but I'm not going to put any more arrows on the end. Okay, let's do another trace here. Uh, this time let's do the one in the um, xz plane. So let's plug in y equals 0, and we'll get z squared equals 4 plus x squared. And that'll be another hyperbola. If I move the x squared and z squared terms to the same side of the equation, uh, the z squared will be positive and the x squared term will be negative. And then I want to divide through by 4 as well to get that in standard form. Okay, so that gives us a hyperbola in the xz plane, and that's going to open on the z-axis as well, so still crossing the z-axis at plus and minus 2. And then if I want to think about how steep it is, again, I can use the ratio of the square roots of the denominators on the xz terms to think about the asymptotes. Um, so these asymptotes here are going to be formed at a 45 degree angle uh, between the x and z plane or x and z axes. I'm not going to draw in the asymptote this time, um, but the main thing is just understanding that although this hyperbola intersects at the positive um, 2 on the z axis and negative 2 on the z axis also, it's wider in the x z direction than the red one. And I said I was going to stop drawing arrows on the end, but then I kind of forgot. Okay, so we have this set of hyperbolas, um, one in the uh, yz plane and then another in the xz plane, both opening in the positive z direction. Um, when I go to do my third trace in the xy plane, I plug in z equals 0, I'll get 0 equals 4 plus x squared plus 4y squared. And at first, that might look like the equation of an ellipse, but if I think about moving the constant term to the other side, and then think about what this is that I have left, okay, the left side of this equation is negative and will always be negative. The right side of the equation, with all the squares and the pluses over here, is never going to be negative. 
not when I plug in real values of x and y anyway. So this equation is actually false. They can't be equal to each other. A negative number and something that's never negative cannot be equal. So this is a false equation. What that means is that there is no graph of this surface in the xy plane. Okay, so sometimes um, we can use what we already have to get enough of the graph, or this is a case where we might want to plug in some other values of z to get some other cross sections. And um, if I'd happened to do this first, I would still wait until I had done my other traces before I choose what to plug in for my other values of z. Okay, and the reason I'm going to plug in other values is that the z equals zero gave me no graph. And so that's useful. That tells me that my surface should not pass through the xy plane. But if it, I want to help draw the graph that I actually do have, I probably want some other values of z. So once I've graphed my other parts here that I have in red and blue, we can see that the z values on these graphs are always either above 2 or below negative 2. So when I choose some other values of z to plug in, I want to choose something above positive 2 or below negative 2. And maybe something not too close to 2 and negative 2. Um, 3 is pretty close, so maybe z equals 4 and z equals negative 4. And because of the squares in this equation, I can actually do z equals positive and negative 4 all at the same time. Um, when I plug in positive and negative 4, I'll get 16 equals 4 plus x squared plus 4y squared. Okay, and then if I subtract the 4 from both sides, uh, I'll have 12 equals x squared plus 4y squared. And we'll recognize that as the equation of an ellipse. If I divide through by 12, I have 1 equals x squared over 12 plus y squared over 3. Okay, so what I have here are two ellipses. Uh, those ellipses are going to be up here at z equals 4 and down here at z equals negative 4. One mistake that a lot of students make is they'll try to put those ellipses just at z equals 0. Remember, we plugged in some particular values of z to get these ellipses, so these ellipses I draw should be up here at z equals 4. Okay, so I'm going to come up here to z equals 4, and then I'm going to go in the y direction, square root of 3, so that's about 1.7, and put a point, and then negative square root of 3, about negative 1.7, and put a point. Those should intersect the rest of the graph that I have in the yz plane, my red hyperbola that I drew at the beginning, those should intersect. Now, I did not plot points super carefully on that hyperbola, so they may not line up exactly perfectly, but if I plotted that hyperbola really carefully, this cross-section that I'm drawing at z equals 4 should intersect with that. All right, and then I'm going to go in the positive x direction, square root of 12, which is about 3.6 units forward, and square root of 12, which is about 3.6 units backward. And then I'm going to sketch in my ellipse. Okay, so that's an ellipse up there at z equals positive 4. It's wider in the x direction than it is in the y direction. Maybe I'll draw in some little dashes here so we can see the uh, uh, major axis and minor axis of that ellipse. Okay, so that ellipse helps give a rim to the part of the surface that we have up here at the top. And then when I do the same thing down here at z equals negative 4, I'll go plus and minus square root of 3 in the y direction and plus and minus square root of 12 in the x direction. I want to do that parallel to the x-axis, so I've got to be a little bit careful there making sure that those um, distances that I go run parallel to the x-axis and then sketch in that ellipse. And if I had drawn everything super carefully, this should all be very symmetric and rounded there. All right, so at that point we can see that we have a um, graph. Uh, we've got these kind of two bowl shapes uh, opening in opposite directions from each other. If I want to draw in some contour lines to make it look 3D, I can do that here. Uh, the bottom one we would be looking at from the bottom, so we wouldn't see into it. The top one, kind of looking at from the side here, so we'll see the side of it that I'm shading black. And then the other part up here would be looking down into the bowl, so I could shade that as well if I want. Um, 
Let's see if I can get a color here to shade that a little bit. All right, so I just drew some contour lines parallel to the two sides uh, arcs of the um, cross sections that I've already drawn. Um, this is called a hyperboloid of two sheets. Um, we'll look at some other kinds of hyperboloids as well, um, but the cross sections are made up of hyperbolas, and it's broken into two separate pieces, so it's not one connected. Uh, surface. So hyperboloid of two sheets.